today is the last lesson on factoring. Seems like we've had a long chapter, um, and it has been, but this is our last lesson. So today we are going to learn about special cases. Um, and those special cases are difference of squares and perfect square trinomials. And we are going to learn how to recognize them as well as how to factor them. So, what's a difference of squares? A difference of squares is a polynomial that's a binomial. It has subtraction, and both terms are perfect squares. So remember that your perfect squares are numbers like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 49, and so on and so on. And we've been talking about them all year. When we're talking about a variable, it's a perfect square if we have an even exponent. Okay, so something like x squared would be a perfect square. y to the 6 would be a perfect square. We can even say z to the 10th. Okay, the square root of x squared would be x the square root of y to the 6 would be y cubed. Okay, remember you multiply the same thing together to get the answer. So y cubed times y cubed, remember we add the exponents and we get y to the 6. And the square root of z to the 10th would be z to the 5th. All right, so a difference of squares. So actually, let's look real quickly. A couple examples of a difference of square might be like x squared minus 25. Subtraction here and perfect squares here and here. 4a squared minus 100b squared would be another perfect square, or difference of square. Okay. So how do we factor them? There's a pattern that we can use to factor them. If we have that a squared minus b squared, it's going to factor to the a plus b and a minus b. Okay. So if you look at this first example, it's always going to be a plus and a minus, and it doesn't matter what order it could be in. It could be either order. It could be minus and plus. Okay. The square root of x squared is x, so it will always go first. And the square root of 25 is 5, so that'll go second. Okay. Or we can go the other way around here. If you can't remember that pattern, you can write it as a trinomial. Okay? And what I mean is this. We could write this as x squared minus 0x minus 25, or even x squared plus 0x, it doesn't matter. And then you can go back to what are my factors of 25, negative 25, that add to 0. Well, you know, your factors of negative 25 are going to be 1 and 25, and it doesn't matter which one's positive or negative, it's not going to give me 0. Okay. And then the next factors would be 5 and 5, and 1 has to be negative because we have that negative product, and that would be 0. So we would split the middle term. So x squared minus 5x plus 5x plus 25. If we could do our factor by grouping, we're going to factor out an x there and get x times x minus 5 or we could factor out a 5 and get 5 times x plus 5, and, or x, sorry, x minus 5. It has to be exactly the same. I read that down wrong. And Aditya, you didn't get a chance to correct me there. And I've got x plus 5 and x minus 5. Okay. Either way works. Again, if you know the pattern, you figured out the pattern over the last couple days, you don't need to do this middle part, the factor by grouping. 
you can go directly from here to here if you have figured out that pattern. Again, I'm not going to tell it to you. I want you to figure it out. All right, so let's factor our x squared minus 4. I'm going to do it both ways. x squared minus 0x minus 4. So my factors of 4, negative 4 that add to 0, again, our factors are 1 and 4. They've got to be the opposite to cancel out. So it doesn't matter. It's not going to happen here. It's either negative 3 or positive 3, depending on where you put your negative sign. And then 2 and negative 2 is going to be 0. So if I split my middle term, x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 4, factor out an x, so x times x minus 2, factor out a 2 from the second pair, x minus 2 again, so we get x plus 2, x minus 2. If we want to use the um, a minus b times a plus b, again, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2, okay. whichever way you like. Of course, if you recognize the pattern, it makes it a lot easier because now we've got some really big numbers, right? So if we follow the way um, that I taught you with splitting the middle term, the 36a squared minus 25b squared, and rewriting that as plus 0, and you rewrite it as ab, uh, minus 25b squared, you've got a really big number when you multiply, when we do the old man and the glasses, you're going to be looking for factors of 36 times negative 25, which is negative 900. I don't want to have to do that. Those are a lot of factors. So this makes it important that you start to see the patterns and learn the patterns because you should be able to see real quickly that 36a squared is a perfect square and 25b squared is a perfect square. So we're going to go with the plus and the minus. Okay. And we're going to um, square root of 36a squared is 6a. And the square root of, that's a 6, it's not a b. That looks so much like a b. 5b. This does not work with addition, okay, because I've got to cancel out this middle term, and if I'm adding, I'm not going to be able to cancel out that um, middle term if it's plus here. So if I was 36a squared plus 0ab plus 25b squared, there's no way we could cancel out that middle term because both of my factors have to either be positive or they have to be negative. Both of them because I have a positive here. In order for this to be zero, I have to have a positive and a negative when I would split that middle term. Ah, look at this. Here's our friend, the greatest common factor. We don't want to forget it. So, I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to start with. That might be wrong. If I divide by 2, I'm going to get 2 times 9r squared minus 49. And that actually was my greatest common factor. So, like, just like when we're factoring... Four, let's just kind of tuck it away for later. We can see that the perfect square, 9 is a perfect square, and 49 is a perfect square. So the square root of 9 is 3. So we got 3r. And then the square root of 49 is 7. And then for my final answer, I'm going to remember that 2 that I tucked away. So there is my final answer. 
So don't forget about the greatest common factor. Here, I don't have a greatest common, in this next example, I don't have a greatest common factor between the 100 and the 81, but I have it with the x's. So remember, we're using our lower power of the variable. In this case, it's just an x or x to the first. When I factor that out, I'm going to get x times 100x squared minus 81. Okay. So now when I go to factor the binomial, square root of 100 is 10. So 10x square root of 81 is 9 minus 9, or 10x plus 9. Remember, the order of my binomials don't matter because multiplication is commutative. And I know you guys are laughing because you heard my Sports Center update. UConn beat Syracuse tonight to set a D1 history to win four straight titles in women's basketball. I know all of you are all excited about that. I know you're laughing. You probably heard my Sports Center in the background. All right, a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial is in this form, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So it's a trinomial, remember three terms. My first and my last term are perfect squares. And the middle is two times square root of the first term times the square root of the last term. Now that seems kind of tricky, so let me show you how I can see if I can recognize it. The way I want to recognize it is I know that the square root oops, of 9y squared, if I take the square root of 9y squared, I'm going to get 3y. Okay. If I take the square root of 16, that's going to give me 4. Okay. Now my middle term is supposed to be 2ab. So this is my a, this is my b. So 2 times 3y times 4. Okay, so 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24. So I have a 24y. So there is my middle term of 24y. So this is a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Let's look at this next one. I have 4a squared, and the square root of that is 2a. Then I have 25 is my last term. The square root of that is 5. In order for this to be a perfect square trinomial, that has to be 2ab. So 2ab in this case is 2 times 2a times 5. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. So 4a times 5 is 20a, okay? So this does not equal that. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Now, actually, I'm going to go ahead a few slides because I want to just, why do you need to learn that, okay? Here's a perfect square trinomial, 25 times 49, if we had solved that as we traditionally does, there's no big um, greatest common factor. So I have to multiply the 25 times the 49. And that's going to give me 1,225. Okay. I don't, I don't know about you guys. I don't want to be wasting my time trying to find what factors of 1,225 add up to this negative 70? It would be a lot, a lot of factors, and we just don't want to deal with that. So how would we factor these? Okay, what we would do is we would factor as we have been factoring all along, which I just showed you makes absolutely no sense. Okay? But I can use a pattern to factor that. So what this pattern is, is if I have my a squared and it's minus ab plus b squared, it's going to factor to the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second one, and then times that quantity again, a minus that b also. 
Now this is the same as a minus b squared. If it's a plus in the middle, it's going to factor to the square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of first plus the square root of the second. And again, this can be written as a plus b squared. I honestly don't care which way you write them. So let's look at some examples. So we could go ahead if we wanted to and we could multiply 9 times 16. And if I do multiply 9 times 16, I'm going to get 144. Well, that's a little bit more manageable to find. But the first thing I should look at is say, hey, wait, those are perfect squares. 9 is a perfect square and 16 is a perfect square. So I'm going to try that first. I'm going to try what Ms. Craig said. All right, so what would she say? She said that a squared plus 2ab plus c, back, or b squared, okay, factors to a plus b and a plus b. Right. So my square root of 9y squared is 3y. The square root of 16 is 4. Now, and then I'm going to write it again. I want to double check to make sure that I'm right. I can multiply, okay, or I can multiply it all out to double check, or I can just take my 3y, the outside in the inside here, and multiply them and see if they add up. So 3y times 4, the outside part, is 12y. The inside part, 4 times 3y is 12y, and that's 24y. So that checks with our answer, or what we started with. So this 9y squared plus 24y plus 16 factors to 3y plus 4 times 3y plus 4 or 3y plus 4 squared. Okay, so let's look at another example. 4a squared minus 10a plus 25. Now, we said that one's probably easier. I got factors of 100 that add to negative 10, but let's go ahead and let's try with our perfect square trinomial. So, 4a, the square root of that is 2a. Because this is minus here, both of my binomials are going to be subtraction. Okay, so 2a minus 5 and 2a minus 5. Okay. If I multiply the outer, the 2a times the negative 5, already that's negative 10a. So I know if I'm going to multiply that, that's going to also give me negative 10a. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. Now, you don't stop because you might be able to factor it. Okay, so we know this doesn't work. Not a perfect square trinomial. So we have to go then back to our factors of 100 that add to negative 10. And they both have to be, remember, negative because our product is positive and our sum is negative. So negative 100... And negative 1 adds up to negative 101. 2 goes in, negative 2 and negative 50 is negative 52. 3 doesn't go in evenly. 4 and 25, both negative is negative 29. 5 goes into 120 times, so that's negative 25. 6 doesn't go in evenly. 7, 8, or 9 do not go in evenly. And lastly, we have negative 10, oops, negative 10 and negative 10, which adds to negative 20. Now, in this case, this can't be factored at all, so we call it prime. Okay. It could have been not prime if we had any of these as the middle term. 
So why is it important that I learn this? Again, I, we're going back to that example of that 1,225 and having to list out all those factors. When I can look at this and just go, okay, the square root of 25t squared is 5t, and it's going to be minus, and the square root of 49 is 7. And 5t minus 7, okay, or as we, like, we could write it squared, okay? Just double check, outer 7 times 5 is 35t, or negative 35t, and we get negative 35t again when we multiply the inside. When we add it, we get negative 70t, so we know that this is our answer. So you always want to check. All right, I hope you guys have a great evening. We have learned what, how to recognize the difference of square, how to recognize a perfect square trinomial, and how to factor them. Have a great night.